Nadia and I are making a film, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> and we need some music. Would it take to put them in your bag? Mm. Oh, and here's more. All the scripts for the movie. Do you want me to show you the film, a little bit of the film that I've started? Do you want me to show you? Or should I show you later? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, Nudge. I love that you want everything now. Here it is. Just have to make sure you can see. Hayley Jo, beautiful Nadia, you will be sadly missed. We will be sure to have a hash brown and smoke for you. Verna Kudas. Yes, I was a nurse at May Day in the 80s, and I probably knew Nadia when she was in a Wodonga community home. Funny lady. It was so long ago now, but I remember walking into a chemist on High Street one day running into Nadia with a very guilty grin. I think she was causing a little bit of mischief. Remember her cheeky little laugh too, and she kept a few handbags, if I remember correctly. She was a character. Marie Mins. Rest in peace, Nadia. I always thought Nadia was a little Jean. When I first commenced work at May Day, I was working in a couple of geriatric wards. Whilst making all the beds in one of the dormitories, I was to see this lass out the window. Hippie type dresses, flowing, barefoot, pacing back and forth under a veranda, always carrying her boombox, blaring pop songs from the 70s. I used to put the window up so I could listen as we made the beds. I didn't know Nadia's name then, but every time I saw her around the hospital grounds, the boom box was attached to her hand, obviously a prized possession. She talked, she sang, sort of danced, swayed to the music, all by herself on this little back veranda. She had found her space, occasionally stopping for a cigarette, perched on the edge of the old granite of the step, every day for months. I stopped her one day and told her my name and asked hers. She told me. I said, I like your music in the mornings when I'm making beds. She grinned and giggled. From then on, I would call out, hello, or give her a wave, and she would wave back. A few years later, Nadia was asked to join a program in Gilchrist Avenue. This was for young schizophrenics who had missed out on developing skills banking, grocery list writing, grocery shopping, cooking, gardening. She disliked weeding or hoeing the soil, but loved planting the veggies. She was very fanciful regarding meals. We would look at menus. I remember other clients would want to do sausages and veg or salad, but Nadia would like the look of veal scallopini, beef masala, beef olives, etc. Bless her. 
always needing spices that we didn't have in the cupboard. Garam masala, star anise, Chinese five spice. Of course, cooking the meal would take too long for her. She would wander off. Called back, she would always set the table willingly. Her tiny hands had trouble using the carving knife, but we got some kitchen scissors and she was able to cut up meats and some veg. Her romantic notion of the meal. The staff and myself learnt to cook some good meals, thanks to Nadia. Our first Christmas at Gilchrist Avenue, Nadia made a request for a little red push bike. That was all she wanted. My friend Bob from Myrtleford went in search of a small bike. He found one. We paid it off and got it before Christmas. Unbeknown to me, it was blue. Bob got the red paint and painted it for Nadia. She loved it and zoomed around the hospital grounds, up and down Gilchrist Avenue. She loved it. Had a couple of minor spills, nothing serious, but couldn't ride down the main street as her adherence to road rules was non-existent whilst pedalling the red bike. We used to go to exercise group at the gym in Beechworth, doing simple aerobics. Nadia had her own style and rhythm to the music backing tapes, but she grinned the whole time, loving it. We went shopping for clothes in Wodonga one day. All Nadia wanted was a straight denim skirt. Lots of the staff were wearing them. She wanted one too. None fitted her body shape. Lorraine had a brainwave. We went to the maternity section. A little denim skirt was procured. A big shirt over the top and you couldn't see the ribbing over her tummy. She was over the moon. We used to walk everywhere. No bus or car early on. My grandmother donated her vinyl four-wheel shopping trolley. Nadia's little feet and legs were always tired on return and walking up the hill was too much. She negotiated everyone into carrying a shopping bag. And when I turned around because of her squeal of delight, I saw Nadia was being pushed in the trolley and one of the boys was pushing her up the hill. That was the end of the trolley. Her feet went through the bottom. From Gilchrist Avenue, Nadia moved over to Wodonga. Jean used to drive up to Wodonga and stay for a couple of days. Nadia had two beds in her room. I freshly made up the spare bed for Jean. When I came back from my lunch break, I thought Nadia was spread eagled on the spare bed and I went in. Different clothes. It was Jean sleeping face down on the bed, exactly the same way Nadia laid on the bed. A little Jean, that she was. A special trip to Melbourne on the train was organised. Some staff and clients got in at Wodonga and the remainder got in at Wangaratta. We went to the art centre where we had organised a lady to guide us around. She had a special knowledge of Tom Roberts and had selected several of his artworks, etc. Next was lunch and then off to the zoo. Great day had by all. I think Nadia slept a lot on the way home. Nadia moved back to Beechworth and into the old matron's house, the White House or Gate House, which is where I first met you, Lisa. Nadia had to compromise her flamboyance and that is when she continued to write her letters, which you know about. Lisa, you know the recent history. Morgan Fields. My mother was a nurse at May Day and I've just let her know of Nadia's passing. She worked with her in many units and of all the patients she's ever worked with, she was one of her favourites, certainly the most memorable for her sense of humour. Mum has written back. She went by the name of Trish Street back then. She remembers Nadia very fondly. She has some very bawdy stories of her. Quote, I left Mayday Hills almost 28 years ago, but the passing of time has not dimmed my memory of Nadia. 
Although I worked with her in several different wards, it wasn't until I spent 12 to 18 months working closely with her in the Gilchrist Avenue program that I got to appreciate her unique personality and good, but sometimes bawdy sense of humour. Nadia was also very quick to suss out each new member of staff to see what she could or couldn't get away with. On Thursday afternoons, all the residents of the Gilchrist Avenue program would head off downtown to do their weekly grocery shopping. Nadia wasn't too keen on this, and within a few minutes of setting off down the hill, she would stop, squat, and lift her skirt. Fearing what was about to happen, the nurse in charge of the outing would immediately send her back home. This went on for a couple of weeks until I happened to be in charge that day. Nadia tried her well-rehearsed little trick, but instead of sending her back home, I told her that wasn't going to work for me. So no matter how many times she tried it, she would still go shopping with the other residents. She stood up, laughed and said, you got me, and joined in the shopping trip willingly. Neither Nadia nor I enjoyed working under a hot sun in the garden at Gilchrist. But it was part of the program and staff were expected to work with the residents. After about half an hour of working in the sun, Nadia would stand up, smile, look around and say loudly, I'm taking a detour to regress. She would then go and sit in the shade and I would join her for a while. Another time, the residents and staff went for a walk in some nearby scrubland. After about an hour, I had to drop behind the others and Nadia realised I had fallen back. She turned around, saw the top of my head sticking up from behind a bush and started singing very loudly, Twinkle, twinkle, little Trish, which of course made the others turn around and start laughing at the very embarrassed but also laughing nurse who emerged from behind the bush. As I mentioned earlier, Nadia's sense of humour could be quite bawdy sometimes. And although I didn't personally witness this incident, it was well known and repeated around the hospital. Apparently, one day, the matron and one of the doctors were doing their rounds. Matron was explaining something to the doctor and Nadia was constantly trying to get his attention, but was being ignored. Then, in a voice loud enough to be heard by all, she made a very inappropriate request to the doctor, who obviously didn't register immediately what she had said. Without looking around, he replied, Nadia, you will just have to wait. It's matron's turn first. Nadia roared laughing and walked away. And with the look on Matron's face, Nadia's request then registered with the doctor. Nadia had finally gotten his attention and his reply couldn't have been funnier if she had scripted it. Nadia was the only patient I ever invited home for Christmas dinner and the only one I ever took out with me when delivering meals on wheels. Nadia was always polite and very appropriate at these times. But away from her familiar environment, she was very quiet and not very comfortable. These, however, were early days in the Gilchrist re-socialisation program, and I hoped that with time, she would be able to move forward and live a more normal life in the community. Nadia was also a very talented artist, but would only allow others a brief glimpse of what she drew and did not allow any discussion or encouragement of her talent. I can only hope that as the years passed, she continued to find pleasure in expressing herself artistically. Nadia is remembered fondly. Tamara Goldsmith was a pleasure nursing Miss Nadia. We'll always remember fond moments with her and her cheeky smile. Sending lots of love to your family. 
I nursed Nadia at the Willows for three years. It was always a pleasure being with her. Her cheeky smile and cheeky ways. She enjoyed receiving all of your care parcels and would wait patiently for the afternoon treats that you sent. Marlene Fitzpatrick. Yes, we will miss her. I also worked up at the Willows. I really felt for Nadia because she was so used to being independent. But Nadia, you will be in a peaceful place now. In house six at Willows, Nadia asked me if I was leaving. I didn't even realise Nadia was listening. Ha ha, she was pretty sharp, eh? Yeah, she was. So it proved a bit to me that they not so much at times, but they are listening. Thank you. 